Hello everyone and welcome to the very first video for this channel for Merino Mountain Railroad. Um, I've posted some other little clips, some pictures, but I haven't really posted like a full-on official video. Um, you're going to find that my videos aren't as polished as some of the some of the uh, YouTube contributors out there, but I've got a I've got a GoPro Hero 4 Black, a little tripod, a uh, microphone on my lapel, and I'm going for it. So hopefully you find this useful. Um, this first video is the first installment in a series, and I don't know how long the series will be. It just depends on how long each video is, I suppose. But it'll be a series on installing a RailPro decoder into one of my locomotives, in this particular case, an SD50. Now this locomotive um, I got, and I'll show you in a second, the locomotive I got secondhand at a train show in Southern California in January. It's in pretty great shape. I don't think it's been run much, if it has at all. Um, and it is a DCC ready. It's an Atherin ready to roll unit, and it's DCC ready, but we're not gonna put in DCC. We're gonna put in RailPro. And I said decoder, and that's a little bit of a false statement because this is not a decoder, this is a receiver. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with RailPro, um, RailPro is a radio controlled system. And this is the controller right here. It's a wireless handheld controller. And it communicates via, uh, I believe, Bluetooth or 2.4. I don't know. Don't, don't hang me up on that. But it communicates via radio signal to this receiver and controls your locomotives. Now, the cool thing about this is, is that if you have a DCC system currently, you can use RailPro with your DCC system. That is to say that the receiver will pull track power off of your track and use track power to power the unit and then all the other commands will come through the the rail pro control unit here so if you have a dcc layout and you want to start converting to rail pro which is what i'm currently doing i have an N, N, uh, nce system and i am converting over to rail pro you can use both at the same time so you could use your current DCC system to control DCC lo locomotives and those that have been converted over to RailPro you can use the RailPro unit to control them and the only thing that the uh, RailPro system will use from your DCC system is track power. Um, the RailPro LM3 and 3S and the difference between the two is S is for a sound unit and um, the three is just a is just a receiver that controls it'll control lights and all those functions just no sound um, that's the difference between their two receivers and um, there's about a 50 it's about 50 percent cheaper to buy a non-sound unit than a sound unit the sound unit is like this receiver is like 80 bucks depending on where you get it and the non-sound unit is 40 45 dollars depending on where you get it um, so we're gonna, this video is going to be about installing one of these RailPro receivers into a HO locomotive and we're also going to, like I said, we're going to do sound. So we got some of these sugar cube speakers here from Soundtracks and we're going to put two of those in the locomotive and um, yeah, it'll be good to go. And the thing is, is that these, these receivers are preloaded with uh with the diesel uh, prime mover sounds and other various other sounds and um, but what what's really cool about railpro is is you can go to railpro's site download their um <clears throat> their software and then you could download sounds that are specific to the locomotive that you're modeling um, they have a whole list of prime movers, et cetera, et cetera. And another thing you could do there too, is if you see if I go to locomotives page here, you could see how my locomotives are all laid out with a video representation or, or photographic re representation of 
what they are. So not only can you see, oh, it's telling me you can't see it. Not only can you see the locomotive uh, number, like uh, 5374 here, but you get a visual representation of that. And, and I'll do a separate video on RailPro. There's a bunch of them out there. Um, if you're not familiar with RailPro, do yourself a favor and look into it. Um, I think you'll be I think you'll be surprised at what you can do with RailPro and what it offers. And it's it's um, the community is driving what's happening with RailPro. So the, the people over at RailPro are listening to what the community has to say, and they're making updates and changes and adding features. You know, as fast I, I assume as fast as they can. So, anyways, enough about that. We're gonna. We are going to document the installation of RailPro receiver into this locomotive right here. This is the um, SD50. I, like I said, I got this in Southern California and um, at, a, at a train show secondhand, but it looks to be in really great shape. So we're gonna put the receiver in here. We're gonna put the sound in here, the speakers, and we're gonna convert all the lights, lighting to LED. And um, I'm not sure what that entails. I know there's a uh, rear, there's rear lighting for the back, you know, the backup headlights or the long hood headlights, long hood lights. And then there's uh, headlights in the, in the front here. I don't know if I can light these number boards or not. I have to look once I get in. I haven't been in this re into this locomotive yet, so I don't even know what's going on in there. We've got to figure out where we're going to stash the speakers and where we can fit the, um, the receiver. So that's going to be what this video series is about, and hopefully you enjoy it. And uh, in the next video, we will detail how I take this apart. It's, it's, um, it's really pretty straightforward, but I know some people are apprehensive about taking things like this apart. And really the reality of it is, is if you got a couple of quality screwdrivers, such as these Weehaw units, uh, like those those are really good and they're they're quality screwdrivers if you've got a couple of those um, and you know some other just basic hand tools you will have no problem getting one of these apart and doing some detail work on it so that's what this video series is going to be about glad you joined in um, I'll be working on the next video just as soon as I finish this one and we'll talk about what I do to get this apart and we'll have a look at how we're gonna lay it out inside, what we have to do, if we have to mill away any of the frame, what we have to do to get this thing converted to RailPro. All right, um, hope you enjoy. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do. And we'll see you in the next installment.